What's up, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. We're going to show another action sequence in this RPG Maker MV video. This is called Sunfire Flare. So we're level 30. We're going to be taking on a level 20 challenge, so this shouldn't be too hard. I've given Stormy, our Black Mage, the Sunfire Flare ability, and it's going to open up the sky, delivering a 5-hit magic combo. It deals fire and non-elemental damage to all enemies. It's a 7 star out of 12 as far as how strong it is in this game Dungeons of Driftwood. So, uh, as I said in the last episode when I was showing you Twister Blade, I wanted to create like a Fyraga skill. And there we have it. So that is our, uh, our ability that's not going to cost magic points, it's going to cost TP. So it's good to use when you, uh, if you run out of MP, the the Black Mage can still cast spells, but they're going to cost TP to use. As with all the limit bursts, they're going to be a 100 TP requirement. But I'm thinking about adding, um, what is it called? Enhanced TP from Yenfly. And I think that would be a good way to go about it to increase the cap. I'm not going to, like, create a bunch of different modes like I did in, uh, the last project legends of driftwood but i think what i'll do is just increase the cap to 300 and disable it from the menu so you can't uh you can't really mess with the settings of it so tp will still be gained in a very similar manner uh, i might even set up uh different classes to have a specific manner as like if you're playing if you switch to a healer class like the white mage or something then you'll get tp for healing because currently you don't do that the same thing with the black mage you don't get tp for casting spells I don't think you do. And I could manually put that in there uh, by just adjusting, uh, adding TP by all the skills. So there's a couple ways I can go about doing that. But here we have it, this action sequence. Uh, I think it came out pretty decently. Um, it's it's uh, pretty simple, really. It just takes a, a lot of time. Um, action sequences are complicated, but once you figure out uh, how to go about doing it they're not too hard you just kind of have to like look at the help file a lot you're going to be doing a lot of referencing so we're at this boss here and contra contrary to what you might think it's not weak to fire so this won't do too much damage um and i'll show you but it is weak to wind so i think we'll finish it with a twister blade in the last episode you saw me do twister blade on a level 10 fight now this is level 20 so it's the same challenge but at a different uh level uh we are level 30 uh, so I didn't want that uh, this ability uh, Sunfire Flare to be super strong because it's made to wipe out uh, an area But it's not like gonna be the main thing you're gonna use to focus on one target That's gonna be what I showed you in the last video the twister blade. So uh, We'll just go ahead and finish this battle and then for those subscribers who want to learn how to uh, Want to see the code and learn how I made the action sequence and look at the animations. I'll do that uh, as soon as we kill this boss. And we're dealing wind damage, so now we should get that bonus. Just enough damage to kill it. Wait. We should get that wind bonus. Uh, but that's going to do it for those who just wanted to check out the new ac uh, action sequence. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you want to see more action sequencing. And Let's Make a Game uh, episodes. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, already. If you want to get some very basic action sequences, you can go to driftwithgaming.com. Uh, we'll see you next time. Those of you who want to learn how I did that, stick around. Alright, so let's look at this uh, action sequence. Sunflower Flare, uh, Sunfire Flare, ha, blah, 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 uh, opens the sky delivering 5 hit magic combo. Uh, I'm using, like I said in the last episode, I'm going to skip over some of the stuff I already said in, in the last video. Uh, icons from Yenfly's message core, you do the slash I. Uh, damage formula is different every game. You don't really need to go over that. You can sort of see everything I have right here. I'm setting as a limit burst. I'm scoping this to all enemies because we're going to be using a whole action in this one. Uh, I'm setting all these skills to battle screen, even the healing skills, because I want them uh, to you, either you have to rest at a town or at a restore point in an exploration mission, like where you walk around. Uh, or I want you to have to be able to cast those in, uh, actually, like in battle, uh, like the healing magic. It's going to cost 100 TP, even though it says 0 right now. Success rate 100, I'm not giving it any invocation stuff. It's just very uh, standard stuff. The animation I created custom for it. We could go ahead and look at those animations now. 
Uh, once again, I'm using the element core to apply that uh, non-elemental damage with the fire damage. Uh, so those animations, uh, this is the, the longest part of, of uh, making action sequences, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's not too hard to program the action sequence. It takes a while to get the animations to look right. And then you spend a little bit of time matching up the numbers as well. We got a lot of vocal tracks here. Let's uh, skip some of that. Okay, this uh, animation is called Flare Burn. Super easy fire animation. This is what I'm applying to uh, all of the um, uh, all of the enemies, uh, like throughout the battle. You can see blah 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 in the middle of the main animation, which is the Sunfire Flare. You see this hitting on all the enemies. So it's really quick uh, animation, eight frames, and uh, it's got uh, just one sound effect. Uh, this is what you see uh, at the beginning, like the charging up as the animation is, as after the starting animation, the uh, the caster is like being floated in the sky. This animation is playing, uh, sort of like uh, the charging up, a uh, little bit post charge up sequence. Uh, here's the sunfire flare. This is what actually took the most time to do. And how I went about doing this is I picked my images, uh, the laser one uh, is the, the majority of it, and then I created a new, uh, a new thing, uh, a new image inside of a, the frame, and then uh, I placed it at a weird angle, and then I moved it to the side of the screen. And then I did that about 10 times at different angles, but mostly the same magnification in just different areas and angles. Then what I did when I created a new fl uh, a new frame, I copied the frame with Control C, press Control V, and pasted that same frame. So it's just two frames that look exactly alike, and that doesn't really help you because it makes the animation look static. But if you click on Batch, I want to go to the end in case I mess something up. If you click on Batch, you can select the frame that you're on that you want to edit, and then you could select uh, the cells are all of the boxes. So every time you create a new box inside of this thing that's that's gonna be a cell like in here there's I don't know like maybe 10 different cells different uh, aspects of that frame so we can pinpoint one frame and then select all the cells and then select the pattern and go up on the pattern one or down on the pattern one and how it works is uh, it'll change all of them with with one thing and you don't have to manually go in there and edit so it saves a lot of time to check out uh, so check out batch if you don't already use this in designing animations you're gonna save a ton of time if you just mess around a little bit with it um, let's see you can do a, a ton of things uh, uh, spl what is it called splice or splaining what is it uh, shifting tweening so if you if you use tweening, you could do like the first animation and then the and where you want it to end up, and then if you tween it, it'll like it'll fill in the blank of all those frames. I haven't really done a lot of that yet, but uh, with the batch uh, function, you can do a lot. Uh, another thing that I figured out is the pattern is basically one, two, three, four, five. So you can see the pattern is limited is numbered as we go through right here. However, when we get to right here, this would normally be like 26 or something. But because this is the beginning of the second thing, like you can see laser 2 is all of these. So this goes actually 1 to 100, uh, even though there's only like 25 uh, frame, 25 uh, things of, of animation, pictures in this, uh, in this image. So if you want to change the pattern to the, the second row, you wouldn't go like 26, you would go 101. So at the beginning of the second one is 101, and then 102, 103, 104, 105. So if we look at uh, from here, this is the end of the laser one. This would be like uh, setting uh, all of the patterns to like 20 something. And then when I went to right here, I kept switching at 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I'm like, how come this isn't working? You just have to change the pattern to 101 because we're switching to a different image. And then it'll it'll uh, work the same. So if we go from the top, uh, one frame at a time, you can see how just changing the, to the next pattern, to the next pattern, to the next pattern. Now, if you look at these boxes, they're not really moving at all. So I didn't have to do too much editing after I did the first frame. Then I just basically copied the frame, pasted the frame, batched the frame, to, and then changed the pattern on all of those cells. Did the same thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And then a little explosion type thing right there. And then we got a little bit of, uh, of dust. And then finally, the flare. Doosh which I went through all of the, the animation frames. 
and then played some sound effects. So in, in uh, actual play. And there you go. So starting with the summon sound effect explosion 8 on the ninth frame. And how I picked what frames I wanted to use is I sort of looked at the frames one at a time. And I thought, where does the explosion seem to start? And I'm thinking, okay, frame 8. However, light travels faster than sound. So I gave it one frame to say that you would hear it about right there. And then the same thing for when you go to this next one. Boom. On 24. So it seems to happen right there. So, you know, light travels faster than sound. So you're going to see it before you hear it. And boom. The 24 is when you actually start hearing that last one. Um, and then this is the Aura one. And this one took a little while because I had to, I didn't really do any batching. I just went uh, next frame uh, and then copied. Uh, I basically went like insert new right there and then i edited that and then changed the the size from to to 50 percent and then i went to the second one on this one and then put the size 75 and then i went back to the first one size 100 and then i went to this one on the next frame and then 125 150 1, 175 and it just went up in increments of of 25 until i got to about like 300 or something and then i went back down and then when uh when we have this jump right here, from here to here, um, I applied the flash a sound effect. and Because it kind of jumps in the animation and you see it has like up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 or something like that. Watch, let's play it. I don't know if you can understand what I'm even trying to say. But yeah, that's the animation I made. Alright, let's look at the action sequence really quickly. Uh, it's going on quite a long time, talking a lot about the actions. Uh, the first one is very similar to the Twister Blade animation, so we're going to skip past that for uh, the setup action. In the whole action, now, we're, instead of using target action, we're using whole action on this one because we're scoping it to all enemies. Like I said, if you're going to scope it to one target, like one enemy or one ally, you're going to use target action. If you're going to scope it to all enemies or all allies, you want to use whole action. That way, every action effect is issuing it to, er to everybody that you're targeting. Um, we're starting up with a 10 screen, however, we're going over a, a set of 300 frames. So this is going to be over 5 seconds. That way it doesn't just flash the screen. It gradually makes it brighter as if you're opening up the sky and letting the sun come down. Um, so we're doing 10 screen, uh, red, green, blue, RGB. So 200, 200, and 200, and this goes on a scale from, I think, 0 to 255. And this, so you got red, green, blue, RGB, um, and then you have gray, which is your intensity. So uh, you're basically going really, when you have intensity 200, that's pretty bright uh, over a course of five seconds. So it's gradually going from normal to very, very bright as, as a solar flare. And then it's uh, uh, over those, uh, when you get towards the end of the, uh, the action sequence, I also tent screen again to go normal over one second. So that it gets rid of the, the, fly, uh, the, the tent screen. Words, drifty words. So uh, we're zooming the camera back in, 100% over 60. Since I think 60 is default, we could go like that and it would work the same, but I just want to make sure it is 60. Uh, animation 487 on user, so that's the animation for uh, the aura. So this is the beginning when you start playing that. Animation 487 on the user. We're floating the user uh, up to 175% of its uh of its actual length, you know, its height, uh, over the frame, uh, over the course of two seconds, and we're going to start motion chanting for the user. So the user starts casting a spell as she's floating in the air. We're going to wait for that flow to finish before we start the action animation. And when you call action animation, it's going to play the animation that's you specified for it uh, inside of the general or the invocation, which is the general settings settings basically. Uh, then we're going to wait for a second and a half. Play animation 489 on the targets. Uh, that's the basically the the simple fire. Uh, I'll just go to it real quick. Uh, it's this one. Uh, nope, it's this one. Boom. So we're calling on this one quite a few times in the skill. So as we go down, we're calling on uh, that one on all the targets. Then we're action effect. When you do action effect, you're calling the damage formula and any effects that you have in here. So when you do action effect, it's going to issue damage and hit the hit everybody. Uh, then we're going to wait a second and a half because we did cause an animation to play. And uh, if you try to go animation play in a row, it's going to skip animations so it doesn't crash. Uh, so we're waiting 90 seconds. Uh, also, you want the damage to be split over the course of the whole big animation that, that we uh, created as well. 
So we're, we're playing two animations at the same time, basically, right here. And we're uh, waiting 90, playing the, that same one again. So fire all the target, fire on all the targets again. Issue the damage, wait a second and a half. Throw the fire on all the targets. All This is all happening while the main animation is going. You know, the, the, the first one. The, the main flare one. Action effect, wait a second and a half. Do the same thing a total of five times. And then towards the end, we're going to wait for the final animation or the last animation that played to finish. Uh, we're going to tint the screen back to normal. If you don't specify uh, a number of frames, then it's going to basically default to 60 as far as I remember. Float the user back down to where it stands by going float user 0% over the course of 45 frames, which is a little bit under a second, three quarters of a second. Wait for that float to land. We're going to refresh the status. I don't think that really needs to be there because we're hiding the heads up display, I believe. Um, yeah, we are. Uh, motion victory, all the, all, everybody else is cheering, the, the uh, user is casting the spell as if it was the end of it, uh, resetting the camera doesn't need to be there actually, show the battle heads up display, that's the end of the whole action, that's going to do it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching, it went on a little bit longer than uh, normal, but that's okay, uh, some of you like this stuff, I know that, and some of you just want to see the beginning animation, so anyway. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of these videos, give this video a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe. All that stuff is really important. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. You guys are awesome. We'll see you in the next video.